I started praying and everything just started happening around me. Different people started going through a lot of different things and it just kind of snowballed and kept going and kept going. And I said, well, God, okay, what in the world is going on? And, you know, we all know that we have issues and situations that take place in our lives, right? But sometimes we need to realize why. But, and so I want to give a verse of scripture. Actually, it's in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, where it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations yes. knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience yes. but let patience have her perfect work that you might be you know perfect and entire wanting nothing see we go through a whole lot of things in life situations circumstances aches pains all kinds of things and as i was praying god began to reveal to me that yes we all go through stuff yeah. but a lot of times we don't have to we don't always understand why we go through and years ago i used to do a, a, a seminar on ministering to people about your call why you're going through certain things because of the call of God that's on our lives and I read something a, a long time ago about how God raises up his people in times of struggle in times of tests and and how he prepares us for what he has for us and part of the preparation that we go through includes tests. Yeah. They include, it, it, it includes trials. It includes all kinds of turmoil sometimes. I've been saved for quite a while and I've never known God to take me a straight line to get me anywhere. Uh, it's always some ups, some downs, some turns, some lefts, some rights, but it's never a straight line. You know, they always say the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Well, uh, that don't work with God. <laughs> Half the time, we're never going in a straight line, amen? But I read something years ago when it talks about when God, when a, 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 a Roman soldier begins to say order a sword for his, for his battle and you have a smith that begins to put this sword together and what he does is he sticks it in fire and he heats it up till it's red hot and once it gets red hot he begins to beat on it because while it's hot you can see all the imperfections when you in the fire you can see everything that needs to be fixed so he puts it in the fire and then he takes it out puts it in water and looks at it to see if it's good enough and if he notices there's any blemishes if he notices that it's not quite straight or not great the, made the way it should be made he sticks it back in the fire and he beats on it some more and he begins to shape it and make it into what he wants it to be and then when he pulls it out and he looks at it he says yeah this is good so he signs his name yeah. on that sword and so and, and he does that because when that Roman soldier comes and get it if he gets in a battle and that thing break he know who to come for <laughs> should he live <laughs> y'all ain't hear me but God does us the same way y'all he'll put us in the fire and allow us to go through all kinds of situations and circumstances and tests and trials yes. just and, and and he'll pull us out every now and again just to look at us to yes. see if we're able to make it and and when he realized are oh, they not ready yet so he sticks us back in the fire again yeah and we're wondering why are we going through all this test and all these trials because he's molding and shaping us when he pulls us out the final time he looks at it and he says oh yeah now that's one i can use because i know they're not gonna break yeah. out 
he puts his name on it and say, I know they're not going to break by reason of use. Y'all got to get this. Not by reason of use. I know they're not going to break. And because I put my name on it, it's almost a guarantee that they're going to make it through no matter what they have to go through. Because they've gone through the test. They've gone through the trial. He says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. I'm a firm believer that that don't just mean, you know, temptation. A lot of times we think it does. But I looked at those verses in, in, in the Message Bible, and it says, consider it a sure gift friends when tests and challenges come at you from every side you know that under pressure your faith life is focused or forced into opening and shows its true colors so don't try to get out of anything prematurely and how many of y'all know that's a big thing we oftentimes try to get out of it and he says let it do its work That's right. so you become mature and well developed not deficient in any way Amen. then I jumped over to one more verse of scripture and this stuff got kind of got me excited in in first Peter chapter 1 verse 6 it says in the King James Version wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Yes. Once again, that's wor that word. Then it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, right. might be found unto the praise of and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now that was good enough all by itself, but when you look at it in the Message Bible, it says, I know how great this makes you feel. Even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. How many can say amen to that? But then he says, pure gold put in fire comes out of it pure Per, uh, proven pure, pure. Genuine faith put in the suffering comes out proven genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your goal, that God would have on display as evidence of the victory of his victory for us. Therefore, saints of God, let me say this in the King James Version, Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, yes. patient in tribulation, yes. continuing instantly in prayer. Yes. I admonish you, according to the Message Bible, cheerfully expecting. Don't quit. Don't quit. That's it. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. And the, my final verse in the, in the New King James Version, same verse, Romans chapter 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. God wants to exhort us this morning. He got this. In glory, with all power, and authority, he conquers my enemies. Oh, power in his hands.
but when she sang that song, he's alive. I mean, it just woke us up. Hallelujah, because Christ is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, SMI. It is so good to be out today and to see each and every one of you. Because Lord knows it could have been the other way. Amen. But we thank God. Hallelujah. We thank God. Glory to God. First of all, I want to give honor to God for all his many benefits, all his many blessings, all the things that he does for us that we're not even aware of. I thank God for who he is and the little bit that I know of him. Amen. Amen. I count it a blessing to be able to stand before you guys today to offer up a word. I've been praying about this word and asking God to help me to be able to deliver it. And I do believe it is a word for the day. Amen. I want to thank God for my pastor, Apostle Dr. Yoli Massenberg. Amen. I want to tell you guys, I've been in her presence. I've been around her now for almost 15, 16 years now. And I know that she is truly a woman of God. She walks and talks what she is. Amen. Amen. I also want to thank God for her husband, Elder Clarence, because, you know, we can't do this by ourselves. And I thank God for all that he does behind the scenes to keep us going. Amen. So now that I've got the formalities out the way, I will ask that you will turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Amen. And when you get there, I'd like you to roll your finger on down to verse 31. We're going to start there. And while you're getting there, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, because your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, I ask you, Lord God, that I will decrease and your word will increase, God. It will be magnified and it will be light for your people. God, to give them hope in this present time, to give them strength, Father God, to give them direction, Father God, to give correction, Lord, whatever is needed, God, that, Lord, you will get the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, the scripture says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? (coughs) Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. As I prayed about this, the Lord put in my spirit, he said, Linda, first things first. First things first. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So as I try to go through this, I beg that you will indulge me a little bit because some of you may be aware that I am a math teacher. Yeah, I teach seventh grade math. And you may be wondering, well, what does my current occupation have to do with the scriptures that I just read? Well, I'm glad you asked that because I want to tell you, for many people, math is a subject that they have a fear of. Why? Because math is a buildable subject. You must understand the basic foundational pieces in order to build to the next level, the next level, the next level, and so on. Many people can get the addition and the subtraction right, but the multiplication and division builds a new layer, and some get lost there. And if they get lost there, they have a hard time trying to build to the expressions and equations, pre-algebra, algebra, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and so forth and so on. 
And so for this reason, most of my students come into the classroom thinking they will never get it. So they are anxious and unsure. Most of them have already written the subject off as a, as a lost cause and want to do only enough to get a passing grade, which is a D. So every day they come into the classroom with trepidation, fear, and dread. They already feel defeated, hoping that something will click for them. And let me tell you that this kind of attitude is hard to break past. What keeps them stuck is not putting their priorities in the right place. Most Christians live our lives this way. We have been taught so much about sin, trespasses, and transgressions that we feel that we will never measure up to godliness because we have fallen so many times before. Right. We've lived our lives believing in our own strength, yes. surviving by our own strength, and just hoping that God will be gracious to us and pull us out when our strength fails. It's no wonder that we don't have an assurance of God's goodness and mercy when we only rely on our own wit, our own strength, and our own abilities. In today's climate of them, sometimes you got to get a prayer partner and battle together in the spirit until that thing is broken off of your life. I want to talk to you about a situation 2023 has thrown all kinds of stuff at me. But one time when he came and he brought a situation to me that really nearly knocked me to my knees and I felt like I could get up. I came to the church and I got to my pastor and I told her, this is what's happening. And when she saw my tears, she didn't even hesitate. She jumped in there with me as a prayer partner and she prayed and we prayed together for God to break that thing. And it took some time, but God came through. Hallelujah. Get a prayer partner. Get somebody with you. Get somebody you know who can prayer through and that you can trust and let God hear that double time prayer raising it up to an exponential level God I need your help and God I need it right now all right all right get a prayer partner raise it to the exponential level you see when all heck is breaking loose in your life. Our flesh wants to be appeased and we want to know why are we going through this? Come on, yeah. come on. Come on say it. Job was a man of flesh and blood, just like we are. He was bestowed with many goods. But when the enemy came after him, he was subjected to everything being taken from him, even his very health. Yeah. His flesh and his friends tried to tell him that he must have done something to make God angry. Right. But God, but Job remained humble. Even when his wife came to him and told him, just curse God and die. And she wasn't doing it because she thought that this was something that would just get him out of it. She was tired of seeing him go through what he was going through. Right. And he said to her, shall I only receive good from the hand of the Lord and not also evil? Right. Job understood 1 Peter 5, 5 through 7 before it was even written. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Saints of God, God cares for you. While you're sitting up there wondering what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, how I'm going to get out of this, God already knows that you have need of it. He's not aware of what you're going through. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be too proud to ask a brother or sister to agree with you in prayer. Don't be pr too proud to tell someone who knows how to get a prayer through to God about what you are going through. Right. At this stage, you are in a fight for your very existence and you need to raise it to the next level for an exponential deliverance, an yeah. exponential healing, Hallelujah. an exponential breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now. Now I want to get to the 
MD, the multiply and divide. But see, when you do it, you gotta do it from left to right. Come on. Now. Because this is the tricky stage. Not only must you know how to multiply and divide, but you must do it in the order that you that it is presented to you. Yes. So if you multiply before dividing, when and when division comes first, you will still get the wrong answer. But if you divide before multiplying, if multiplication comes first, you still get the wrong answer. It's all in how you do it, in the order that it has to be done. The mathematical operation tells you must multiply or divide from left to right according to what comes first. This is the same way in the spirit. Hallelujah. If multiplication comes first, that is when the problems, situations, challenges are multiplied first, then you must multiply your peace. Yes. Well, all right. You see, 2 Peter tells us, 2 Peter 1, 2, 3 tells us, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Yeah. You must not let the enemy steal your peace, because that's what he's after. Stop allowing the problem to consume you and drive you into faithlessness. When the enemy starts to multiply the challenges, multiply your peace. Then there's the division. This is where the enemy comes to divide and conquer. How? He uses distractions to divide your focus. He will bring it from the left to the right first, and if he can't get it that way, he will try to trick you and bring it from the right to the left. So what do you mean, preacher? I mean your enemy doesn't play fair. That's right. He will try to get to you to doubt the word of God that's been spoken into your life. He will try to get you to surrender and believe it's not worth living a life for Christ. He will try to twist the word of God that has been spoken into your life. He will try to get you to surrender and say, I can't do it. Yes. That's what he did to Eve. He brought her a twisting word. Yes. He came with the word that was twisted. Did God really say? That's right. That's when she started trying to assume what God meant. Now, she talked with God every day with Adam in the cool of the day, but she allowed the enemy to distract her, and she started trying to assume that maybe God doesn't want me to have this. So she fell into hedonism, where she wanted to be like God. God knows that you'll be just like him. No, my brother and my sister, the division comes needs to be worked in the order that it comes. When it comes from the right, that is when you speak the word of God back to the enemy. It is written. That's right. It is established. Job 22, 28 reads, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you and the light shall shine upon your ways. Decree what the Lord says. Open your Bible, pull the word out and apply the scripture to what's going on in your life and what's happening and when the enemy comes and try to bring doubt in your mind and try to trip you up, twist you up, make you feel like you're less than, that's when you say, but it is written. Yeah. And sometimes you might have to agree with the enemy when he says, you can't do this. Yeah, you're right. I can't, but God can. Yeah. Don't get weary in doing what is right. When you get weary and lazy, there's a tendency to let things slip. And when you do, you have to go back and redo what was done wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So now let's talk about the addition and the subtraction, left to right. Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Addition, addition, addition. He's adding to you what you need. So, after you've gone through the process of multiplying your peace and fighting what the enemy has tried to divide, you now need to seek God to the seeking God, add seeking God to the equation. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek His righteousness and watch Him add to your life blessings upon multiplied blessings. Yeah. This is where you add to your faith. Well, preacher, how do I do that when my faith is shaky or is wavering? Remember God's promises. They are the only things that are steadfast and unmovable. If you go to 2 Peter 1, 4 through 8, and I want you to go there because I want you to hear this and see it for yourselves. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, Add to virtue, knowledge. Add to knowledge, patience. And add to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly and sisterly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and about, They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do I need to add these things? Because, see, your enemy is trying to tell you that you have not. You will not. You cannot. It won't happen. It is the death blow. This is the end of it all. You've done all you can, and this is it. But when you add to your faith, virtue, and then the virtue, patience, all of these things make you so that you will not be unfruitful. And the word of God will begin to take root and establish you in God's righteousness. Add from the left to the right. Add virtue and knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. Yes. When you add these things, you'll not be fruitful, uh, barren or unfruitful. These will help you to raise your head above the enemy and see what God has on the horizon coming your way. Hallelujah. You'll be as David when he wrote in Psalm 26, 7, 6. And now, 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 now shall my head be lifted above my enemies around about me. And I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Sometimes you got to get your head out of the battle. The enemy is right there fighting you. And I remember when I was a little girl and I had to fight. Lord, it looked like I had to fight every week because I had one enemy every week. She wanted to challenge me. She just didn't think I could beat her. But every time I would get in the middle of the fight, she would try to get me to just be looking at what she was doing. And I finally had to get to the point that I was like, no, I'm bigger than this. I'm better than this. And I had to raise my head above what it was that I was currently dealing with and begin to say, God, I know you can help me out of this. And at that time, I was just beginning to learn a little bit about God. But I knew that I was not going to keep going through with this with that person. And I knew, God, I am going to stop this now. And I had to raise my head above it and say, no, I'm not going through this with you again. Not going to go through it again. See, sometimes you got to subtract. Yeah. So you got to subtract the negativity that the enemy throws your way. 
Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside or subtract every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In some cases, you've got to subtract before you add. The key is to know when. When is the time that you need to subtract some things for your life? When is when you can't gain more confidence, you cannot gain more because you have added the wrong things in the first place. Right. Now you have to subtract first, then add. Yes. <laughs> so after you subtract, our flesh doesn't want to lose or subtract anything. It's always calling for more. Right. More food, more pleasure, more this, more that. Yes. Appease me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give yes. me. Everything that is calling for more of has a detrimental effect. Detrimental to your weight, right. detrimental to our health, yes. detrimental to our spirit, Yes. Detrimental to our minds, so, yeah. detrimental to our relationships, yeah. detrimental to our emotional well-being. But subtraction is beneficial. Yes. Some things we got to let go of in order to gain the goal of eternal life. Yes. Some things we must let go of to gain the winner's cup. Yes. When we're not willing to let go of some things, they cause us to lose our focus and become stuck. Stuck into settling for less than what God has for us. God says you're healed, but you keep hearing the doctor's report. So you get stuck. Okay, well, nobody's ever come out of this. No, God says you're healed. God says you're delivered. Well, nobody's been delivered, but this situation, God says you are delivered. God says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Listen to what the Spirit is telling you about yourself. Yes. This is what God is declaring over your life. Yes. 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 Glory. It is only when you're willing to let go and let God that you're able to walk into the abundance and the overflow that he has for you. Yes. Yes. You must be willing to let go of fear. Fear tries to get a death grip on us. Fear tries to get us to the point that we fear, oh God, oh God, I don't know if I can make it through this. But God says you are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. Do you understand that? He loves you. Let go of what is comfortable. Let go of what is tradition. Let go of what worked in your own strength. Let go, brother. Let go, sister. Let go and let God. Yes. Yes, yes. Just as we see in the order of operations for solving mathematical problems, we must understand that there's an order of operations for solving spiritual problems. In John 4, 24, Jesus told the Samaritan woman, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. While she's over there talking about where to worship God, Jesus telling her that it is not the where, but the how. That's right. We are like the Samaritan woman. We want to talk about the where and the when when God is talking about to us about the how and the now. Right. It is in our desire to know the where and the when that keeps us from putting first things first. Yes. This is where the math ain't mathin'. <laughs> we keep taking things out of order. Losing our focus, getting off track. We forget that we must, one, seek God. Yes. Put our problems and our troubles into the group God called God. You got this. That's right. Two, worship God. Yes. Raise our worship to God to the exponential level. Yes. Don't do it alone. No. Join in with others who can help you get a prayer through. Remember Psalm 34, 3 said, where David said to him, he said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us, us, yes. exalt his name together. Yes. See, David knew he could exalt God by himself and he has always exalted God by himself, but he got to the point where he said, no, I'm raising this to the exponential level. I want to multiply it by itself, by itself, by itself, to whatever level needs to be so that I can give God the glory 
in my life. Then you got to believe God. Take God as his word. Multiply your peace. Don't allow the enemy to divide you from your goal. Put on the whole armor of God so that you can withstand the wiles of the enemy. Yes. Then lastly, put God first. Don't be like the heathen who spend all their time and their energy worrying about what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, what they're going to wear, where they're going to live. Yes. Your Father in heaven knows that you have need of all these things. Yes. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. Lay aside the weights and the sins that beset you. Subtract from your life what weighs you down and keeps you from seeking God. Yeah. When you do the math the right way, then you will see the math starts to math. Yeah. When you put God first, when you put first things first, then you will see God turn things around for your favor. Watch God take care of the situations that concern you. Yeah. Yeah. Watch God change what the enemy meant for evil into a blessing for you and for those connected to you. Yeah. First things first, people. Yeah. First things first. Yes. Seek God. Yeah. Worship God. Yeah. Believe God. Put God first. His promises are yea and amen. You ain't got to think about it. You ain't got to doubt it. You ain't got to, and I'm talking in the, in the vernacular, in the street, and I'm saying ain't, and I'm crossing these T's and whatever. But I think you understand what I mean when it comes right down to it. God is your source. Not your job, not people, not your house the things that you put your trust in that are not of God God is the source yes. yeah. put him first yeah. get your priorities straight yes. Paul said for what is it uh, Joshua said for God I'll live and for God I'll die but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord yes. Yes. priorities people what are your priorities? What is your focus? What are you putting your attention on? Yes. First things first. Yes. God, I need you to do everything that I got to do today. Yes. And Lord, if you help me, I know I can make it through. Lord, if you strengthen me, I know I can make it. Yes. Sometimes you might have to raise it to the exponential. <laughs>